My name is Lawrence Tyndall here at Glidefast Consulting, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add a new field to a form in ServiceNow. Before we go into the system, I want to explain why adding new fields to ServiceNow is extremely beneficial to you and your organization. Adding new fields to forms in ServiceNow is a great way to capture additional metadata to the records that you create and manage in the system. Out of the box, each module in ServiceNow has most of the fields that you would typically need, but in some instances, there are times where you would want to create a new field for capturing a specific value or data point. In today's tutorial, we're going to create and add a new field on the incident form for capturing vendor-issued incident numbers. This field will be used in cases where we have to open an external ticket with one of our vendors and we want to reference that ticket number when following up with the vendor. Now that we've covered why creating new fields are important, let's go into ServiceNow and create one. Please note, you'll need the admin role assigned to your user account in order to create a new field. Also, please follow your organization's software development process when making changes to ServiceNow. Typically, most organizations have a development, test, and production instance of ServiceNow. So before pushing any changes to your production instance, make sure you add this change to an update set and move it through the appropriate instances before publishing it to your production instance. The first thing I want to do is open up ServiceNow, go into the Application Navigator and type in Incidents. Now click on the Open module located underneath the Incident application and open up any record. Now to add a new field, Right click on the form header and click on the form design option located under the configure submenu. A new tab will open displaying the form editor for the incident form. To the left of the form editor you have the fields tab. In this tab you can drag and drop fields that already exist on the incident table but have not been placed on the incident form. And then in the field types tab, in this tab you can pick the type of field that you wish to create and then drag and drop it into the form. As you can see, we have reference fields, date and time fields, currency fields, and so on and so forth. In today's example, we're going to select the string field, as this type of field is used to store text values like a reference number. All you need to do is drag the string field into the incident section of the form editor. Placing the field here means that the field will appear in the main section of the form. Now that we have the field placed in the main section of the form, let's give the field a name. To do this, click on the gear icon. This properties window will now appear. In the first field, label, the value in this field will be used as the display name for the field on the form. For this example, I'm going to enter vendor reference number. In the next field, name, this field is used to define the name in the database for this field. In this example, I'm going to update it to u underscore vendor underscore reference underscore number. Next, we have default. This field allows you to define a default value for this field. In this example, I'm going to leave it blank since we'll want to store a unique vendor reference value in this field for each applicable incident record. In the next field, max length. This field allows you to define the maximum character length that can be stored in this field. For this example, since most vendor incident reference numbers are quite short, I'm just going to enter 40, as this is the minimum maximum character length you can define. In the next two fields, mandatory and read only, these two fields allow you to specify if the field should be mandatory when creating an incident record, and if the field should be read only. In this example, I'm going to leave them unchecked as I don't want these constraints on the field. In the final field, dependent, this field allows you to specify another field that this new field is dependent on. This means that this field can only be edited when a value is selected in the dependent field. For this example, I'm going to leave this field blank since it's not dependent on any other field. The next step is to click on the X button at the top of the window and click on the Save button. Now that we've saved our changes, let's close this Form Editor tab and refresh our incident form to see the new field. 
As you can now see, the new field has been created and added to this form and is now ready to be used. And that is all for this tutorial on how to add a new field to a form in ServiceNow.